Aha! This is Laborts, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. After priming the miniature with Valaiho's Meha Black Primer, I apply a coat of matte varnish. I add 7 drops of thinner to the airbrush cap with 3 drops of matte varnish. Always put the thinner in first and then the varnish or I will slap on your tiny hand. I mix it with a brush and then I pinch on the airbrush needle and pull back the trigger to mix it more. See these bubbles? Same as Granny's mouth during a seizure. Apply a few thin coats until the model is completely matte. Why are we doing this? Black Cat has a black latex suit and when we are highlighting black it will be a little bit hard to see which part has some wet paint on it and which part has the satin finish of the primer. So this helps us with the highlight process. I cover the visible skin parts with Tasgore fur, which is a desaturated reddish brown. It's great for our base layer of the skin and this color will act as our deepest shadow. Leave the lips and eyes completely black while covering the rest of the face. Now I paint the eyes with ice yellow. Always try to reach the eyeballs from the side and try to leave a tiny outline of black when you cover them with paint for extra definition. I start to highlight the face with a mix of Tasgore fur and red skin flesh. I cover almost entirely the previous layer, but I leave a very thin vertical line along the left cheek. Right if you are watching the video. It's not very visible now, but it will be in the next step. Reduce the highlight areas with red skin flesh and cover around 60% of the forehead and cheeks. On her chest, leave a bit of recess shadow between the collarbones and the breasts. This way, we can emphasize the low body fat percentage and make her body more defined. Mix some ice yellow to the red skin flesh and gradually decrease the highlight areas. Now the small vertical line on the left side of the face will be more visible. Nowadays, I like to experiment with these little fill lights and secondary highlights on the skin that the secondary light source creates. I guess you can say it's an OSL effect, but a very minor detail. At this stage, it's not going to work on the full model, but keep watching the video until it makes sense. Oh yeah, short disclaimer. I highly recommend you watch the whole video before you start paint along, okay? Okay. Now with thin layer of ice yellow, I paint the maximum highlight areas of the skin. My main work area is the right side of the face, which is the left on the video, but I do cover that secondary highlight on the other side as well and I add a small dot on the lower lip. Off camera I previously made a thin line with red skin flesh going all over the lower lip. With that little dot of ice yellow, the lips will look shiny like she is wearing a black lipstick. Let's work on the suit. I start with dark sea blue. Did you guys watch the Venom video? This is going to be a similar process. And not in a good way. So let's just use a little bit less dark sea blue and highlights than me, because I will over highlight the suit. Remember you guys, when you're painting black, you need to leave at least 40% of the surface completely black to read as black. That's why mid-tones read as our main color. This applies to every other color as well, but it's trickier with black. Now I start to blend in the dark sea blue with the glazing. I move the brush from the black to the dark sea blue layer and I wait between each layer to dry. This is a back and forth process, so I go back with black as well. When I go back with black, I make sure that I use the opposite direction with the brush strokes, so I move the paint from the dark sea blue layer to the black. Okay? I don't know how many layers I did, but uh, probably around 4 to 5 with each color. So don't stop until it gets smooth like Granny's butt cheek. I mix some verdigris to the dark sea blue and reduce the highlight areas drastically. Less is more. Papa Laborts knows that it start to look like the suit is becoming this dark desaturated green rather than black. Don't worry about it, because we will make sure it will read as black. Now we really have to think about our light source. Light is coming from the left, so all the shapes that face towards that direction need to be highlighted. If you have trouble with this, just take a photo of the mini when it's primed under a lamp, so you will see the general highlight areas. 
Or if you're a bit advanced with your highlighting skills, try to draw an imaginary line from the light source to the shape that you are highlighting. If the angle hits the shape perfectly, then there will be a maximum highlight, and if the angle is obscured, then it's a shadow area. To decide where the mid-tones and half-tones go uh, for the shadows and highlights, it's basically up to you, but it's an exercise that really benefits your painting skills. Now I glaze back some black to the shadowy parts and help the mid-tone to come through more. You can guess the direction of the brush. That's right, we move from the higher value to the lower value areas. Add some more verdigris to the darksy blue and reduce the highlight areas even more. We'd like to highlight the feminine curves of the model. Round breasts and hip. And those vertical highlights emphasize the shape of the thighs and legs. I looked up some references for latex and it's, uh, and it's very similar to NMM with all these high contrast highlights. If you guys want my advice, don't just google mini painting videos to reference different materials. Those are great for starters, but make sure you check some real life examples or real life examples of painted stuff because those artists uh, more likely do the same and it will be your interpretations of the subject. Don't get me wrong, copying other artists had some great benefits, if you prefer someone's style. But converting your take on something with a brush is where your own style is going to develop. Then I go in for another round of glazing black over the shadow halftones. Just a few layers to darken down the suit. I mixed some ice yellow to the previous highlight mixture and painted the second brightest highlights. The right is coming from the left, so we need to communicate that. On the right, I intentionally leave everything darker. I want to introduce a fill light on that side later. I cover all the hair with London Grey, uh, with the furry parts on the wrists and uh, above the ankles. To highlight these parts, I mix some ice yellow to the London grey and sketch out the main planes of light, treating all these parts as one continuous surface. I add more ice yellow to the mix and uh, cover the areas on the left side more. I do keep some of the shadows between the bigger hair locks to add more depth to the hair. She has lots of hair so it's easy to work with it and it's a relatively nice mold so it's easy to pick out some hair locks here and there. Glaze some of the previous mixture over the recent highlights to make the hair smooth like Granny's butt cheek. Same method as before, so move the paint from the lower to the higher value area and always make sure you wait for your layers to dry before applying the next one or I will slap on your tiny hair. Now with pure ice yellow, I apply the maximum highlights to the hair. Ice yellow is great for grey uh, or white hair and since we haven't used any saturated tones this faint yellow highlight really works well to move the focal point to the head. After that I highlight her rope with a mix of black and London grey. I just try to make sure the rolled up rope in her hand has some nice separation and I also paint the grappling hook. I further reduce the highlight areas with a mix of London grey and ice yellow. Now this rope on the ID card is black, and in the comics I'm pretty sure it's black too, but if you prefer to make it look like a regular rope, then use a brown with a mix of red skin flesh or ushapti bone if you want to break up the tonal variation of the already black and grey character. On the claw, try to emphasize the small rectangular shapes the claw is built from. Go around the edges where you can and make the crevices black to make it more defined. Use the same mixture we use for the hair and uh, with this layer do some edge highlights over the parts that face towards our light source. 
Use a thicker consistency, so your brush strokes can be more confident. I did the same steps for the little rings of the collar, so just pause the video here, because uh, these details are too small for uh, Papa Labot's old very eyes to paint in front of the camera in real time. With pure ice yellow I did some secondary reflections on the suit, because latex is more reflective. I did that off camera as well, but I think you can see those highlights pretty well on the legs and the left side of the character. But uh, here is a comparison picture to help you. The rocky parts of the base is uh, Patreon exclusive. You can access to that content on my Patreon page. The link is in the video description. Now, the cat on the ID card is black, but uh, my cat uh, passed away last summer and I really like to paint him on this miniature as a little uh, tribute. Haters are going to say that my cat was a little bit thicker than the one on the base, but it's uh, just his fur, okay? So to imitate his pattern of fur, I started with uh, London Grey as a base. My cat's fur was patchy with uh, white and greyish brown. The greyish brown was more dominant towards his back, so covered his back with uh, Katachan flesh. Uh, I painted the eyes off camera with the black and ice yellow and I started to highlight the white parts of the fur with the previous grey mixture. To communicate the surface more, I rather used tippling for a fur-like texture, creating small dots and lines over the white parts of his fur. After that I worked on a gradient on his fur with London Grey and a mix of uh, Katachan flesh and uh, black on his back. I glazed back and forth between the two colors to get that organic transition. Then I created the pattern of his fur with uh, black. <music> Lastly I used ice yellow on the white parts with stippling motion while reducing the highlight areas. Now the upcoming steps are the parts uh, where I ruined the back of the miniature basically. I'm not going to describe uh, what paint or what consistency I used, it's uh, not important. So do you guys remember the little fill light uh, on the left side of the face? So once I sketched that fill light on the face, I wanted to make a warm yellow fill light all over the character's right side. That's why I kept that side intentionally darker. So I sketched out that part with ice yellow. Now this part you can follow if you like this effect, uh, because I was quite happy how it turned out. So basically you need to create these harsh highlights with ICLO to outline the character. The important part is that it needs to work for one angle and that angle is our uh, money shot. You need to put these highlights next to our darkest color, so next to the black on the suit and next to the darker shadows on every other surface. Okay, so don't <laughs> follow along to this part. At this stage, I wanted uh, these bright highlights to make sense, like there is an actual light source from the left that make these highlights work, and uh, try to do an OSL effect from the right side of the base. Uh, you don't think it looks good? Me neither, but uh, it will get worse. Now, I was very happy with the front, but uh, wanted to add a little bit more warmth to these uh, lights, so I glazed some phalanx yellow over them. I really liked the effect, so I was uh, happy with that. Now back to <laughs> ruining the miniature. I had trouble making sense of my OSL effect. Usually I build up highlights uh, starting with the lower value and going back and forth with colors more likely to, to throw me off rails. But my main problem was I didn't want to create this big OSL effect. I just wanted those fill lights to make sense and I just kept adding more and more yellow. Uh, in the end it uh, looked horrible and uh, I hated it. I was extremely frustrated so I had no patience to record the whole process but basically I repainted the back and got rid of the OSL effect. 
If you look at the miniature from the front, these fill lights works fine, so why would I do an effect on the back that I didn't want to do in the first place? I was happy how it looked after I fixed it. So lastly, I finished the robes and uh, gave them some texture and uh, highlighted it with greys and used the same colors for the cat's color. This way I had a finished miniature that I was happy with, but sometimes miniatures can give you some challenges and they should if you want to improve. There are always new areas to grow as a painter. If I wanted to, I could edit this part in a way that you guys would never see this mistake, only the end product. But I think it's very important to learn from mistakes. And uh, even better <laughs> if you can learn from other people's mistakes. Everyone fails once in a while. And if you follow some top-notch uh, miniature painters, uh, you can believe Papa Labors that those guys fail a lot of times, but they are persistent and uh, they are fixing their mistakes. So I hope you guys will enjoy painting Black Cat because it's an awesome miniature and uh, have a great time doing so. A huge thanks to my Patreons who support these kind of videos. With special shout out to Cold Bloody Dom, Trying to Paint Minis, Jonathan Mosner, One Sharp Joe Crafts, Gucci McCrash, Guy and Belanger. If you like to support the work of Papa Labors and access to PDF guides, consider joining my Patreon page. I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as a granny's butt chick. <laughs>